Oscar Pistorius was asked by Rivas Dean Camp's father to swear on behalf of his family that he did not kill his daughter on purpose, but he was unable to respond. In a private meeting in June of last year, Mr. Steen Camp faced Pistorius, 37, who was freed yesterday after serving over half of his 13-year sentence. Mr. Steen Camp pleaded for Pistorius to be honest. As a participant in the Victim Offender Dialogue Program in South Africa, Pistorius consented to meet the Steen Camps in print. The murderer needed to persuade Mr. Steen Camp that he understood the damage he had caused. Pistorius was transported by air from Pretoria to a correctional facility near their residence in Port Elizabeth. Because of the mental torment she believed he had inflicted on her and the resentment she now harbored, Riva's mother decided she could not bear to face him. However, her spouse was eager to discover the truth at last. At Mr. Steenkamp's request, all conversational specifics have been kept confidential up to this point. Since Riva's death, Pistorius has had the unwavering support of his close-knit family, especially his brother Carl and sister Amy, who live in Lynn. They all believe that he accidentally shot Riva because he thought someone had broken into his house when the couple was sleeping. The 80-year-old Mr. Steen Camp was certain that the shooting was premeditated because his daughter wanted to break up, but he paid close attention to Pistorius' steers and confession of innocence. However, Mr. Steen Camp disclosed, I told him he was lying when I spoke with him. I met his eyes directly, but he was unable to meet Meng. You have a brother and a sister, I said. Are you telling me the truth about their life? He just put his head down, and I left, Mr. Steen Camp remarked after Pistorius was unable to respond. Mr. Steen Camp who waited 10 years for Pistorius to finally confess that he was thinking of killing Riva, claimed that his silence at that crucial juncture revealed a great deal about his guilt. He too would have felt differently if he had acknowledged it. She would not have had that part of her. He'll have to deal with his dark secret forever. He claimed that not even once did he consider hitting the man who killed his only daughter. It was not worth the effort. I would have preferred to face Dyson Fury and the man. It would have improved my mood. Mr. Steen Camp, who was ailing and had experienced a stroke, called Pistorius' account of the shooting moment utter rubbish. I think there was something before that, he stated. There obviously had to have been a major disagreement. Her clothing was discovered outside after being flung out the window. She tried to leap out of the window, but she was unable to do so. Riva would have been forced to use a wheelchair because of the height of the balcony above the ground at Pistorius Pretoria residence, according to him and Mrs. Steenkamp. Riva must have thought, can I do that? Mrs. Steenkamp continued. At least if she had, she would have been alive. Pistorius would be played by Riva for the rest of his life, even though he was now free, according to Mrs. Steenkamp. Every time he closes his eyes, he will see her face, she continued. He clearly sees her face, which will always be there. Thus it appears that he rarely sleeps without medicine. Both of her daughter's cell phones were with her the night before she was killed, according to Mrs. Steen Camp, who stated that one of them was still missing. Her purse has also not been found yet. The story is far from over, she continued. She stated in her impact statement during Pistorius' parole hearing that she thought the athlete had killed both her husband and her dog. I'm positive that Bari's broken heart caused his death. No parent should have to bury their child, and especially not under the conditions that led to Riva's passing. After Riva passed away, Barry and I, who were both devastated, tried to support and care for each other with whatever emotional strength we had left. My dear Barry left this world completely broken-hearted, believing that he had failed in his role as a father and in protecting his daughter. There was more than just emotional damage brought on by Riva's heinous murder. The trauma also had bodily manifestations, as seen by the rapid decline in Bari's and my own health. Starting today, a 16-day project in South Africa is expected to be highly influenced by the Pistorius murder of Riva, which is the reason behind the UN-backed campaign against gender-based violence, which is supported by Mrs. Steenkamp.
Commencing today on the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, the 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence is an annual global campaign that will last until December 10, Human Rights Day. Activists launched the campaign in 1991 during the Women's Global Leadership Institute's opening. Around the world, people and groups utilize it as an organizing tactic to demand the prevention and abolition of violence against women and girls.